Hey guys, welcome to the last lesson of this chapter. This is about letting go of relationships and or transforming relationships. Because this chapter has all been about sort of discovering your theme and empowering yourself and understanding that there's more to life than just your physical mind. Of course, you already had a hunch about this. You already knew this. But now that you know that there is the physical mind, the non-physical guiding mind, which is always in support and communication of you, and that, that's, that there's the higher self, soul, love, life that's always in support of you as well, albeit from a more, in a sense, um, passive, in a more passive way, in a way, just sh sort of uh, making sure that you're always basking in the love and the light of your true self. So now that you know that there's these different higher aspects of your consciousness that are engaged with your life to different degrees and that you can call upon, that you can draw upon, that's always supporting you and guiding you specifically for your journey, for your theme. And now that you realize that this journey never ends and now that you've come to uh, cultivate the reflective attitude and you're learning more efficiently and more quickly from all the events and data that you experience in your life. What's starting to happen is that you will start to accelerate your learning journey in this life. And therefore, the more quickly we learn, the faster our reality tends to also reflect our changes within. In other words, the more that I use catalysts, the more that I use my experience, my experiential realm that seems to be outside of myself, but I know and experience it today that it's not, the more that I am able to interpret it from these higher levels of my consciousness using greater wisdom and intuition and clarity and seeing a bigger picture perspective. I'm now learning and appreciating because of this reflective attitude within myself. I'm now learning so fast using almost solely the level of imagination to learn things before they even have to be made manifest. But of course, I also learn from the manifest challenges and flow and not flow and people around me, etc. But so since now you're starting to really accelerate your learning, how much benefit and learning you extract out of the experiences that you and your higher mind are attracting into your life for the purpose of learning and greater expansion and better fine tuning of your thematic energy, so to speak, in this life. Now that that's all happening for you and you're starting to accelerate that, one thing that you'll notice that many people, maybe including you, probably including you, are challenged by is relationships that don't quite work anymore. Relationships that seem to sort of represent the old paradigm. So when we're talking about transforming and letting go of relationships, first and foremost, we're talking about transforming and letting go of your relationship to your own ideas, to your own beliefs, to your own paradigm. And that's what's going to change first. So the more that you understand more of yourself, the more you wake up using catalyst efficiently by learning from it and waking up from it, you will now again accelerate your expansion. As a result, you will no longer be able to fit in the previous paradigms that previously could support your vibration, but now your vibration is in a sense too big, it's too high, it's too expanded, it's too free, it's too wild. It no longer really fits into those old ideas. And so you will find that everything in your life that is a reflection of your old ideas, and especially the things that don't seem like they have enough of a capacity to grow along with you, certain things can. You might still enjoy the house you live in, even if you've expanded your consciousness. So the house might be able to still be reflective of that higher frequency. Your dog might be able to effortlessly go with you because it's not in any way a contradiction. It's not limiting you per se. But let's say that you, um, that you are in a romantic relationship that really has been for the past few years um, a reflection of your old ideas about yourself. And now that you're changing those old ideas within yourself and you're letting go of these ideas, you will find that your relationship to the people, a lot of the people around you will start to change significantly. Now there's a few things that might happen here. It's possible for these relationships to be able to grow and expand with you. It's definitely not rare. It happens a lot. It happens all the time, in fact. And to an extent, this is also the reflection of what you believe is possible. Because it is possible for you to shift into an alternate parallel version reality where, because may I remind you that everything is a parallel reality. 
And so there's parallel versions of everybody that you generate out of your own higher self, higher mind consciousness. So it is possible to shift an alternate reality where the seemingly same partner, and of course he or she will be a different expression of their overall soul and of your soul, because it's kind of a combination of both. What we see as physical beings, it's kind of a combination of your own soul creating energy to look the way it does and the agreement of their soul to participate in that dreamlike connection within the illusion of physical reality. And so you have the ability with proper belief system shifting and with enough confidence and freedom within your frequency to actually shift into a parallel version of your own reality, which then comes with a different version or variation of that person that you have, say, been in a relationship with. Or this can apply to parents or friends or family or neighbors, doesn't really matter, or coworkers. Um, but let's say that your partner that you've had a relationship with for a few years seems to be quite static compared to, of course, everyone changes. Every change is a complete change, even if it's seemingly small compared to the previous state it was in. But so everyone changes, but compared to how fast you are moving and using catalyst, because you're watching all my videos and this is speeding up for you. And maybe your partner isn't consciously engaged with his own journey or her own journey as much as you are really into it. And so you will find that you're starting to discover perhaps a deep inspirations that you've never fully acted upon. You, your, your childlike dreams may return. You feel confident, you feel freer, and suddenly the concepts and agreements that you've agreed to, and perhaps the person that you fell in love with, is no longer quite the person that you feel is conducive to your journey, to the next stage of your journey. Now, for obvious reasons, this is a sort of tricky challenge for many people because um, people have kids, people have houses, people whatever. So we've created so many agreements with each other and we've started to live our lives in such a concealed way together um, that when we make a significant change, we will find that the ripple effects of that will challenge us in terms of asking us to make choices. So that's what this lesson is for. It's just to recognize first and foremost, to acknowledge that this is what happens on a very frequent basis as you keep expanding in your own journey. The thing is you will start to attract more and more people into your life that are also in the same vein as you, meaning they're very excited about their excitement. They're very passionate about their passion. They're very engaged in their spiritual awakening and their continuous growth and their accelerated learning and living. So the more that you become that way, the more you'll attract people, friends, relationships, and communities that will then form in a way your vibrational family, more so than your physical family might feel like your actual family because you will find so much more interest in the relationships that you will gather around you by the law of attraction naturally, by simply becoming an accelerated learning being. So what to do in the case of a more static agreement or relationship? And when you really feel that you're expanding faster at a faster rate than your present paradigm and your present relationship or relationships can support you with, now, I have, um, I have many friends that are following their joy and resonance, and some of them are very abrupt in this. They are very much like, okay, well, this doesn't resonate, so I'm gonna change this right now. And some people, um, some people feel like they're expanding into new realities, but they are a little too afraid, perhaps, you could say. They're a little bit imbalanced towards not so much the extreme side of the first example, but the extreme side of perhaps fear of loss or fear of lack or fear of disruption or fear of hurting other people's feelings. Um, so that's the other extreme. I, I like the middle way myself. And of course, you, you got to practice with this and feel into this yourself. But I promise you, if you start applying these teachings, you'll have plenty of practice transforming and letting go of relationships on a almost daily basis. Uh, but don't be afraid of this. This is the most amazing practice. And after some of this practice, you will find that you discover, you will discover the truth of love, so to speak. You will discover a depth of love that transcends whatever the agreements is that you have made, that transcends 
whether or not you're physically together that transcends whatever the personalities might agree or disagree on. And so it's really profound. It, it, it sort of breaks open the personal bubble and allows you to really, through those sort of mini sacrifices of going through relationships in a certain way and transforming them and occasionally or quite frequently in many ways, letting go of relationships by being bold and brave in the way of following your heart while still maintaining your integrity and your communication. This is what I was going to say. This is kind of like the middle way between those extremes that I personally really prefer. It is where I will follow my resonance. I will honor that if I strongly feel that I'm expanding into a new paradigm, into a new reality that I want to explore. I will not hold myself back from moving steadily in that direction. However, I will also have patience in a way that um, that I understand where the other person is at in their process and I do my very best or what I feel is my very best to honor the agreements that we have made, whether they were verbally spoken agreements or whether they are subliminally organically assumed agreements, because those are also ones that I kind of want to honor to the best of my ability, even though it wasn't written down on a piece of paper or it wasn't communicated like, yes, we're going to be in this way for this long and in this particular type of a relationship. You will find that even if you have no agreements, with somebody verbally and you say like, let's just have no agreements. Yes, you can act on that, but you will find that energetically, relationally, simply through being together, you will form certain bonds. You will form certain subliminal, subconscious, energetic assumptions, which I kind of treat as if we've made these agreements verbally, not to quite the same extent but I do honor these as well, meaning that I'm sensitive to where the other person is at. I'm sensitive to what their worldview is or what their understanding is of the relationship that we are in. And I understand that when I expand beyond that paradigm or when I'm called to go into a different direction, I understand that even if we haven't agreed upon just being able to, or sorry, if we haven't agreed upon having to stay in this relationship in any way, there are certain assumptions, there are certain projections for the future, there are certain, they assume that I'm still here tomorrow, for example, this is just a simple example. So these things I personally always choose to honor as well. And therefore the only tool that will clarify all this is communication and time. So I'm not one to like extremely quickly walk away, I will give everything that I have to the possibility of transforming that relationship. Sometimes one could even argue that I stay in a relationship like that, perhaps a little bit too long, perhaps there's a little bit too much patience, perhaps I l drag it out a little bit farther than it needs to. Nevertheless, this is just my own personality and this is what feels good to me. I'd rather feel that something is truly complete and finished and that I've done everything that feels relevant and good to me as a person, to my integrity, before I choose to actually move on because I know I can move on at any time anyway, if I really have to or want to. So it's not that big of a deal. I usually don't have a lot of things to process after the end of a relationship. So I'm not too worried about my own state of being. Um, so it's more an act of feeling into the potential of that relationship and seeing if the potential behind that relationship could still match where I sense I'm strongly going. And so we will have communications where it's brought into the light that a new desire has arrived, a new direction has arrived, a new resonance has been made clear to these physical minds, or at least to mine in that example. And so this is communicated and we'll see how far along the other person wants to go in terms of that vibrational shift and that reality or paradigm shift. And if it seems like that other person doesn't want to change along is no longer compatible. As soon as I see that there really is no way to honor that relationship anymore without sacrificing my relationship to my own soul journey, that's the point where I will have to make that decision and where I will in a sense gladly make that decision for the both of us that perhaps is better to end this relationship. Now I understand that this can be really scary and in a way it's not my favorite moment of life still to do that. It's, um, you know, it's sensitive. It's a sensitive um, experience and there's a lot of energy involved and a lot of lack beliefs can be triggered both in, um, in either person in that scenario. So 
it's never the thing that I look forward to the most, but it is also not something that I fear anymore. And I do prioritize following my resonance over staying in a relationship that's no longer serving either party. Because I know if it's no longer serving me and my journey, then for sure it doesn't serve them for me to stay with them. Maybe for a little bit, again, to give it that stretching period where we can see what's possible. We can communicate possibilities. We can quote unquote, try it out. We can see what happens and how far we want to journey together still. But if it's really clear that that capacity is not there, then obviously a decision has to be made. Otherwise we sacrifice our relationship to ourselves and to our new ideas. And then we get stuck in one of those day two challenges. So again, day one is the new inspiration. Day two might be the challenging reflections of the old paradigm, including relationships. Now you might choose for certain big life changes to, to sort of stay in that day two challenge for a little bit while still maintaining your frequency and your vision, but communicating, trying to see if there is some possibility for those agreements, for your present relationships to transform along with your new change or to even shift into an alternate reality where this person suddenly does want what you desire. And this person suddenly does feel aligned with your new vibrational shift. And this person suddenly is as awake as you are in many ways, etc. That's possible too. It's not always relevant. So it might not always happen in that way, but you can at least try it and play with parallel realities and using imagination and using intention. Something will always happen. So if you shift into the confident reality that no matter what, you want a really harmonious, transformative transition, either with your relationship or away from that relationship into a new relationship with your new paradigm. And who knows who is waiting for you there already anyway. So, but as soon as you set the intention to shift into reality where things can work harmoniously, fluidly with clear communication, and then let the chips fall where they may, meaning either this person will grow along with you, or it's simply not in their or your highest service to have the relationship that you're having with yourself in the form of them continue in this particular fashion with these particular two body mind compositions. So, do whatever you can, do whatever you desire to try and attempt and be patient for and do your best and communicate, honor your integrity to the best of your ability towards that person. Be patient, understand, be understanding as much as you can. You will feel better about yourself for doing so before you choose to leave or before they choose to transform with you and leave that old paradigm with you, which is of course also very cool. Um, but if that does not seem to work, then the choice again has to be made to let go of that relationship. Otherwise we revert back to before day one and we are dulling down our frequency and we are literally gradually crystallizing this ease. I wouldn't say disease, but this ease to start with into our physical and circumstantial realities. Again, remember catalyst or inspiration or invitation or challenge or struggle is always first offered to the mental emotional body or consciousness. So when we do not accept those new impulses, when we're not accepting the challenge of becoming really fearless within ourselves, removing all lack beliefs or transforming all lack beliefs within ourselves and really believing that we can step out of a relationship if we need to or have to, or if our soul sort of commands it of us and that we can do so with respect and communication and sometimes some patience, at least that's my choice up to you then And as we become more fearless of that change, and as we uproot those beliefs and transform them, you will find that some of your greatest liberations and transformations await you in those choices.
So it's almost inevitable for someone on the spiritual journey, on the, especially on the accelerated learning, reflective attitude, inclusive spiritual journey. It's very rare for a person on that path to not have to go through some of these lessons and beautiful revelations of really working at doing one's best to shift realities and transform the relationships and or move away from particular relationships. Now, this doesn't always have to mean your partner. It can just mean that you accept the fact that, for example, your physical family is or was sort of the, um, the grounds from which you were raised, but it's not defining who you are today and you don't have any actual obligations to them per se. And so for many people, that's a very tricky point too. People feel very, very loyal to their physical family. And in some cases, this is genuinely thematic in nature and they generally are sort of a group theme exploring what it's like to go through life together for the full extent of their lifespan. But in many cases, this is not necessarily thematically true and people that are raised within the same nest, so to speak, that are hatched within the same nest are not necessarily meant to go through life as the closest potential friends and and, and partners, and I mean partners, not in relational partners, of course, that happens too, obviously, but I mean partners in terms of partners in life and co-working together at this life and at this journey. Many people are meant to actually leave the nest and go into new explorations. That doesn't mean you're breaking the bonds of relationship with these people per se, but it does mean you give yourself permission to feel free to explore yourself without being bound by anyone from your physical family that you were raised with, to not feel obligated to any other physical human being and to really realize ultimately that the only permission you ever need to make a change is coming from your own higher mind. And when you are truly intuitively, transparently and honestly and with integrity connected to that true impulse, not just the needs and the wants that you think you want because of your insistence, because of your belief in lack somewhere else, therefore I want this, but out of a holistic transparency, out of almost like a meditative channeling state, you know who it is you are. You have used and adapted and, uh, and applied the reflective attitude. You have opened up to those higher consciousness levels that are constantly feeding you intuitive impulses as to who you are. You've done the thematic exploration. You are starting to connect some of the dots and it be, it's becoming clearer and more obvious, at least vibrationally, who you want to be and how you want to live this life and what sort of the energetic quality or lesson or purpose is, the primary purpose is of this life, even if it's very abstract. So you're on this accelerated journey of self-discovery. And so you have to understand that ultimately, the only connection you need to honor when it comes down to it is your connection to your own soul. Do whatever you can to honor your relationships to the people around you. But when it comes down to it and when you've given it you, your all, the only choice left for you to make is to follow your own true resonance. That should never be sacrificed except for perhaps a overseeable period of time for the sake of respect and love and communication and understanding if that's how you want to be of service to the people around you. But ultimately, you have to stay true to the direction that your soul inspires into you. And true inspiration is the highest authority. So if you are truly inspired to go in a certain direction, do trust that by all means, trust that. Just communicate it as clearly as you can to those that you've attracted from your old paradigm and let them know you have become a new person. You have become a new being and that you are absolutely willing to show them what it is like for you to live right now and how you experience yourself right now and that they can absolutely join you in those endeavors if they so desire. But that if not, that you have to continue your journey because otherwise you're making yourself sick. You're making yourself unhealthy. You're making yourself not in alignment with why you are here. And so the purpose of your incarnation needs to be honored more so than the relationships that come and go anyway. So I hope you feel that permission internally without just going reckless on everyone at the same time. Again, that's my personal recommendation. You have to find your own balance in this. Again, I have friends that follow their resonance, but that don't really care that much about what anyone else feels.
And sometimes it seems like that's the case for me, but it's never the case for me. I always hold this simultaneity, this balance of doing whatever I can to ease the process of transformation, to see what is possible, to offer that new reality to the other person consistently, as uh, non-intrusively as I can, but still consistently offering, showing the new offering, the new possibility. If they wanna take it, great. If they don't wanna take it, and it seems like there is no capacity for taking it, then I will make the choice to follow my resonance without regret. I hope this was somewhat clarifying and helpful, or at least acknowledging to some of the situations that you might be dealing with or at some point might encounter. Now, feel absolutely free and encouraged to share about your process like this in the Academy Forum, because I know that there's a lot of people, if not all adepts, that are to some degree faced with this in their realities. The transformation and letting go of relationship is a constant practice and it really, really empties you out of the ego effect. It really allows you to become more and more expanded, more and more selfless, more and more giving, more and more of service, which I'll talk more about in the next chapter. Thank you very much. Your homework is simply to uh, listen to this lesson again and see what it does to you and apply this to your own life, obviously. Thank you very much.